Hi everyone, Ernie Tech here, and let's start off with uh, our exploration into Ernie's little mainframes with uh, installing an actual an actual mainframe environment, one that is as easy to get up and running as you could possibly believe. And in this case, I have chosen to use McGill University's Music SP multi-user system. And I did this for a very good reason, and that is that I wanted to be sure that when you started in this venture, this adventure as it were, that you didn't have frustration along the way that you were able to do this with as little grief as possible. And it was very satisfying, something that would work literally right out of the box with a couple of mouse clicks, no going over manuals or reading or scratching your head or wondering what in the world is going on here and then just saying this is too much work and then moving on to, I don't know, whatever else you wanted to move on to. So this is the easiest one to start with. It has a very interactive system. It is something that was used in the academic environment at McGill University up in Montreal, Canada, and a bunch of other universities. And it was geared towards people who were not using it as professionals, uh, let's say working for an insurance company or something like that. Academics were going to use it, and, uh, and students are going to use it. And it actually really is a very cool operating system. The easiest way to do this is to have everything in one place with one single file that I've put together. And then what I've done is I've gone and looked all over the interwebs and I have found all of the people and all of the sites that were uh, developed, were, were centered on Music uh, SP. There was a gentleman who had passed away, unfortunately, back in the late 2000s by uh, named Dave Edwards. And what Dave Edwards was, he was an employee of the McGill University Computing Center and he was an absolute expert at Music SP and was really one of its greatest proponents. And when this system was being, uh, let's just say, being downsized out the door in favor of something else, and if I recall correctly, it was client server or whatever the case was. You know, and for a while, mainframes were kind of like too expensive and too much bother. I think that's reversed. Uh, he wanted to save what he could so that everybody from that point could continue to enjoy it and he created an emulator called sim 390 which works on a windows pc unfortunately it doesn't work on a linux or a mac but we'll be working with things that do later on in the series so what i did was put everything together so i found the files that were the actual mainframe operating system. I found the SIM 390. I found the configuration files. And I also found all the manuals. I put them into one zip file. And they're available here at this little website that I set up for this, uh, this series of videos. So I'll put down in the bottom the link to this website. Go over there and you will see this one, one file here. Download it in music. SP-TK and what TK stands for is turnkey simply meaning that there's nothing to do turn the key the car starts and you're off and about TK being sort of the name that other people have given to the Hercules environment the MVS environment and so on um, as we get further on this I'm going to populate this web page with other things other operating systems and other ways to do this but this is the best way to start so you immediately have an operating example on your desktop that you can play with and hit buttons and put in things that make no sense and just say, hey, I've got an actual mainframe. I, I don't know what I'm doing with it, but I've actually got a mainframe operating system working and it was dirt simple to do. That's pretty satisfying. I think I'll stick around and do some other stuff. If I throw you into the deep end first with Hercules and MVS, um, yeah, you're not going to be happy with me. All right. So let's download this and you're going to put it on, a, on your C drive in one subdirectory. And you go over here, and these are all the files that are inside of this zip file. So I have it on a Google Drive, and what Google does is shows you what's inside the thing. And these are the actual files. So there's a couple of JCLs, which I'll get into later, but there's a couple of things which are really the heart of this. SIM390, the actual operating system emulator, which is just a single double click on that EXE file, you're good to go. There's no installation at all, none whatsoever. The CFG file is where I went through and just sort of created the proper configuration so it knew what to do, where to find things, um, where to find the, um, the emulator parts that you will use to pretend it's a mainframe. And other things, passwords were uh, is in there so that you know the name of the users and their passwords so you don't have to figure that out. Some notes, whole thing of manuals, a lot of manuals. And then the actual 
thing itself, the music demo, which this is all based on, you don't have to open these up, but they're there, so it's one-stop shopping. You've got it all right there in your hands. Okay, go over here, download that guy. It gives you a little message. Um, there's nothing going on here, trust me. Go ahead and download. You can't see the download dialog because it's on the other window, but trust me when I tell you, it downloaded to a subdirectory. Usually it downloads to downloads. That's where most of these browsers go to. Um, so just know that that's where it usually downloads to. So I go over here and I'm in my C drive. I'm in Explorer. And what I've done for you, <laughs> for me, I've taken this download from the downloads file. I did this already. And I moved it over to a subdirectory I created called musicsp.tk. Call it that just so you know what you should call it. Go ahead and click it once. Say extract. Um, I don't want it to duplicate the name because, you know, I think you know what's going on here. Just make it off the root of C. Hit extract. As you see, it's now everything you need is right there inside of your C drive on a little directory called musicsp-tk. There's nothing else for you to do. There is no configuration. There is no fooling around. There's no installation. There's no command line stuff. Literally, you double click on one file and you have an instant mainframe. So watch this. If I double click on SIM 390, the EXE, the only EXE in there, by the way, there, you say, well, what is there? Well, that is the actual emulator of a ESA, IBM ESA 390 uh, mainframe. See up here it says SIM 391.7 initialized ESA 390 memory size IPLing from device number 201 blah blah blah. Well, that's all the stuff that you would have had to have figured out if you were to do something like this on your very own. But uh, it's been done for you by Mr. Edwards. And um, I put it all together in one uh, zip file so that it was all ready for you to play with. Over here in this uh, ugly, hideous, flesh-colored window, and I've not figured out how to change the color, but I don't like that color. This is what the computer would present to you as sort of a hardware state. Now, if, if you remember pictures of the old IBM 360s and 370s from the 60s where everybody had white shirts and ties, um, they had a big honking console with lights and buttons and dials and all sorts of stuff. Well, we don't use that anymore. You can. It's, it's available. I mean, they, Hercules looks more like that. But this is the actual minimalist window into the IBM ESA 390 right now. But there's nothing else to do. The actual Music SP software is fully functional right now. All we have to do is get to a nice pretty window and, and talk to it. And the fun thing about SIM 390 is that you don't need any more software. It has its own console window built in. It has its own terminal built right into it, which is phenomenal. So let me just move that out of the way, just for viewing pleasure. Go to File, Add Local 3270 Session, meaning this is right here on our computer, not dialed in, well, they don't dial in anymore, not coming in from some emulator over Telnet and, and, and IP, and go to a Model 4, because it's pretty, and watch this. Well, there it is. That's the actual thing that you would see if you were at McGill University and you went into the computing center and you sat down in a chair and the big old mainframe was functioning at some other part of the campus, that's what you would see. And it's functioning on your PC just like that. And keep in mind, this is the actual operating so software. It's not somebody's interpretation of it. It's not somebody that wrote something that looks like it. It's it. It's the actual Music SP mainframe operating system that was taken out of service back in the late 90s and Mr. Edwards because he had permission who I think he did he made it available to the world and said here it is we just had to write an emulator so it can run on something that's not the size of a room and and this is what what we get that's beautiful all right all you have to do with this thing now is just read the instructions it says printer press enter key to view the next page when you see this message well I see that message 
What's the user ID? Well, the standard user ID for this is dollar sign zero zero zero. It's a silly user ID, but that's what it is. There's another one called guest, but anyway, that's the one. That's the admin gives you the access to pretty much all the stuff. Press the tab key, and there's a real common password that's being used a lot, has been used a lot in the emulation world, and that is see you later, C U L A T R. The same one they use in MVS on uh, Hercules, which we'll get into in another video. But what you'll do is you'll just type in lowercase C U L A T R. Now, if you forget this stuff, it's okay because in that sub in that directory that we just made, where we unpacked that one file, there is a text file called passwords. Just double click on the text file with your, you know, with your in Windows, and uh, a Notepad will come up and tell you what the user account names and their passwords are. So that's easy. Press Enter. It says, "All right, last time you signed on," and press Enter again to continue. You're actually sitting in front of the admin main menu of an actual Music SP mainframe operating system as emulated by SIM390 um, by the, uh, the generosity of Mr. Edwards. And this is what you would see if you were a student or perhaps an administrator or a, whoever. This is, well, you wouldn't be a student and see this. You'd be the administrator. This is the admin main menu of the system. And it has all sorts of stuff in there. We're going to get into all of that and how you do things. But before I did all that, I thought, let's just get it running. Let's get it into your system. I'm not even saying install because it's not much of an install. It's just copied into a directory. Let's get the thing up and running. Be sure it works. It works. It's easy. I've done this 50 times in the last day or so. And to make sure and it, yeah, it works right off the bat. And then we have our little playground in which to go to the next step, which is to get into all the all the good details of, uh, of playing with the mainframe. After we've spent enough time with Music XP, uh, SP, I'm always wanting to say XP, I guess a Windows type of thing, whenever we're ready to move on to something a little more complicated or a little more capable or something fuller, we'll then go into other operating systems. But for now, for the next couple of videos or whatever we'll uh, we'll work with this to give uh, give you the feel give you the, the the grounding on how to work with a mainframe and its operating system in this case music xp all right easy way to get out of this is press the x key you see on the left hand column there is one through 13 h and x um hit the x key it drops you out into the literally the operating system to the prompt this is, uh, this is something that we should probably talk about very quickly, maybe to dispel some, some stuff. A lot of people that I've talked to had a, who have an interest in this say, yo, I used this way back in the day when I worked for an insurance company or bank or whatever. And I always went over there and I logged in through Roscoe or I logged in through CICS or something like that. And I said, that's great. A lot of stuff you can do in there, but it's whatever they let you do with your job. Whatever your job entailed, that's what you had access to. But you didn't actually, for the most part, I don't think, get into the heart of it through the actual command line. Because really, mainframes are not that unlike computers we're used to. There is a command prompt. Some of them are pretty, you can't tell what they're doing. Other ones, eh, not so bad. But in the uh, music world, music uh, S uh, SP, you're at the command prompt, and they refer to it as the go prompt. Because you look up in the upper left-hand corner, it says end and go. You're at the go prompt. So if I wanted to get out of this thing and I wanted to log out, I would just put in a regular old operating system command, short for log off, O-F-F, press that, and you're out. And the whole time this is happening, if you look over here on the right-hand side where my mouse is moving, the console is kind of keeping track of what's going on. So I signed in as this user, and I signed in on this terminal, and then a little while later, I signed off and I signed off that terminal and here we are. If I click that, the operating system says, well the mainframe says, do you want to remove this local session? And I say yes, but before I do, the local sessions mean that you're not over a telnet connection or you're not remote or you're not using another product like a 3270 emulator. This is actually coming right from this little emulator itself. Mr. Edwards was super smart and super kind enough to actually incorporate its own terminal right in this product, right in this emulator. So that's why they call it a local session. So yes, I'm going to remove the local session. Now, remember that mainframe parlance the idea of removing something is really 
kind of you know, that's something that you don't hear a lot in regular in PC stuff. What do I mean? Remove it. Well, you have a number of sessions that are running. Perhaps maybe there's ten people. You actually remove the session rather than shut it down. You remove it. That's what they call it. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Make a noise here. So right off the bat, we have a fully functioning system. We have the Sim 390 emulator. You may have seen something called Hercules. This is like Hercules, but much more fundamental, and it works great. Um, you have a console window, which gives you all the information of what's going on at any given time. If you read this, it'll show you that uh, we started up a, uh, an actual ESA 390 emulation. We uh, started the program, or IPL, meaning initial program load, from device number 0201. And um, we attached various and sundry terminals. And here we loaded the operating system from the various drives. And we do have a functioning system. We go over here to File, Exit, and it says, do you want to shut down SIM 390? Meaning, literally, do you want to shut this the mainframe down. Normally to do that is a big process. Not here. Yes, I want to shut her down. And we are done. So that is the first step, is getting a mainframe environment up and running to work with and learn from. And I wanted to do it in such a way that it was just as pleasant and simple as possible for you. So you felt encouraged like, hey, I can do this. And you can. It's, it's great fun. So anyway, I love it. Alrighty, um, the next video will go into uh, much more detail with being a mainframe administrator, operator, programmer, whatever you want to call it, using Music XP, SP, I keep saying XP. And then from there, uh, we'll then move on to some more mainstream operating systems like MVS or even something more esoteric like maybe MTS from Michigan. Anyhow, thanks for uh, all the nice, encouraging uh, comments that I got from my introductory video. It makes me feel uh, very happy that I'm doing this. It's going to be great fun, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from you and, and making a lot more. Alrighty, bye for now. Please subscribe, and I will. Uh, I'll talk to you later.